Patreon.com slash the walkoff podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. Tell me why you're not a fan of Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro. So that's like a book at this point. Um, I, this is good because we got a whole comment section who's been crapping on Scott and I for toting the company line and saying, I, you guys, are you afraid of the, the ramifications? And I say, no, we have Joel on all the time. You're on every long toss we do yeah. every Sunday and you are not afraid. You have and your you opinion. We have ours. Never so. silenced me. There's I've never, I'm, this is a place where you can have your baseball opinion no matter what it is. So. So let's air your frustrations right now, Joel. Let's. Uh, okay. Let's dive into, I think that when you look, let's just look at how they spend money. Okay. They're terrible at it. Atrocious. They're <laughs> okay. probably just through that. They should have been fired. Okay. Let, uh, so Henjin Ryu, who I, in 2021, I wanted to be a fan of him. I made videos. I'm like, this guy's good, you know, but what are we looking at? We're looking at a 32 year old injury prone pitcher. Okay. Old, no velocity, injury prone. Okay. Chalk that up. George sure. Springer, old, injury prone, inconsistent. 32 year old center fielder could be as, as, as a 50 year old center fielder. You don't play 32 year old center field. I, seen center field i know the history of the game mickey mantle willie mays ken griffey jr these guys horribly the degradation that they experience at 30 because of the physical toll their body goes through from 20 to 30 30 to 40 is not the same and if you put 150 million dollars on that and expect that to play 150 games you're ridiculous you uh sorry just while we're on the george springer Obviously, the uh, Aaron Judge free agency, that whole contract uh, was a big talking point. And I know we discussed uh, a lot about he is a big boy, Huge. Aaron Judge, right? Huge. And, and you brought up, I don't know if you have them ready. This was a couple months ago. But you brought up the number of center field, like the, the performance of center fielders who are six foot three or taller and how they well, let's just say don't age gracefully necessarily in a statistics standpoint. Uh-oh. Well, guess how tall George Springer is. He's six foot three. Uh-huh. Big boy. Big, big boy, boy, big swing. Um, a, a very aggressive swing. Another thing that the mechanism that his swing is not Teoscar Hernandez's swing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a, violent. That's, that's smooth mechanics that creates 115 mile an hour exit. Below. George Springer is grip and rip coming out of his heels, falling yes. down on the ground. With his and is much more a uh, Boba Shet than a Tay Oscar, for sure. Yes, he's his power comes from creating it every single where he can, place he can and, and putting everything he can in every swing. Springer at the same time, though, injury prone in his 20s. We're talking about a guy who's played 65% of games for Blue Jays. You look at his numbers, that's one thing to look at a player, but you have to look at him, 65% hundred games, right? A hundred games. He's going to play 65 of them. Then his backup plays 35. So he's not as good as he looks because 35% of the time he is a backup. And now our backup isn't Randall Gritchick. We don't even know who our backup is. Our fourth outfielder is such a step down right now. When we were in a position two years ago where, you know, Gritchick's not the greatest ball player, but hell, he could come in, hit a bomb, make a catch, run the bases. Right. That's a fourth outfielder. That's a fourth outfielder that slots in the number five, number six spot in the lineup sometimes. Right. That's a then to then to turn that into Tapia, which is a serious step down. And then to take a step down again to literally nothing at this point, which we don't know. Like I'm fingers Tapia pro far. Tapia may have felt like a step down from Gritchick, but I I do have to say, he over delivered. Like sure, like he hit two sixty two seventy right. Like he, there was some spurts in June where he was hitting the ball pretty well, right? There, there was a span of forty games where I think he bat three fifty. Yeah, the second half of the season, I think Tapia was pretty good. Got off to a bit of a slow start, but Tapia, I think we all have to say for what we expected from him. 
we were pleasantly surprised, were we not? Yeah, but would, wouldn't you have taken 19 home runs from your fourth outfielder? <laughs> right? Yeah, you I can't argue him? there. I can't argue there. Sure. I'd have taken 19 bombs from my fourth outfielder. Like, okay, that's not too bad. Especially considering Springer is going to be gone. That's probably a little bit more. I don't know. But, um, okay, so let, the, the point here is is transactions that were made. Okay? okay? So now we look at the 2021 team. Okay? The 21... The 2021 team being the team that is everything that at least from my uh, couch GM position, I'm like, that's the team that you build. on. This is the team that you build on. This solidify this lineup that put up 870 runs, 660 runs against 200 run differential expectations of a hundred wins. Okay. Now I said, it's a 91 win team, but with, Everything that you build a team now is based on runs scored, runs allowed. When you put up 200 more runs than you allow, that's a first place team. That is a first place team. And at that point, we were the second youngest team in baseball with a hundred million dollars of spending room towards the cap. So what do we do? We lose Ray, we lose Simeon. We bring in Gosman, Kikuchi, Barrios. That is Sixty million dollars that brought us zero wins, zero, zero. Sixty million. You went spent sixty million on zero wins. Gosman got three. Ryu, Barrios, Kikuchi, negative three and a half. So your Gosman addition is lost by bringing in three by having injury prone, inconsistent guys who have not made their you know. When you look at Barrios, he didn't make his career in the AL East. He made it in the AL Central. Okay? You come to yep. the AL East, what happens? You give up the most home runs. Your whip blows up to 145. 18 million a year for the next seven years. God, I hope that works. But we just brought in the fences. You know? <laughs> so every step that we make to, you know, hey, it's like I, I'm completely lost. Like I said, it's a book. And I'm jumping chapters here. But buying old, inconsistent players. Brandon Belt, Kevin Kiermaier. Are, are you kidding me? Are you? Brandon Belt hasn't, he's a 63% player. He's played 63% of the time over the last four years. Kevin Kiermaier plays 62% of the time over the last, since 2017. His OPS is, his OPS plus is 85? That's your replacement for when Springer's out of the lineup, is a guy who's 15%. I know they're going to be making some catches at him. They're going to be making some catches. They're going to make but Teoscar dropping three or four balls a year is not the same. That production is, is not equal okay. to the 100. Okay, hold on, on, hold on, hold on. And that he knocks in. Teoscar may have only dropped three or four a year, but he also like hand delivered two dozen singles into doubles just by his... Sure. Sure. Slow trotting into the corner. Absolutely. Heaven forbid one a guy gets on from a, a loose base hit. I understand that. I understand that. If you look at Reggie Jackson, he was a you know he was a loafer out in the outfield, right? But what did he do? What could he do with the bat? Right? It's the it's what you lose. What what did we brought in? What's our outfield? Our outfield right now is inconsistent Springer, inconsistent Kiermeyer, Whit Merrifield. Yeah. Wow. What's our slugging percentage from our outfielders is, is 400. Is 400. Our slugging percentage from our four outfielders in 2021 was 470. No, you're not catching those balls to make up for that loss of slug. You can't. And now you've made it easier to play defense because you've made the outfield that much smaller. Man, Teo would have been better because he's got less balls to catch. He's got 20 feet less to go into the right power, into the power alley. Like, all of okay. these decisions that they made when are, they moved in the field. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just are, no, 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 no. This is good. Are you a believer that we should have, I guess, Teoscar Hernandez, and we can talk Lourdes Gurriel Jr. separately, but it's similar, okay? I can't see losing both is my issue. Okay. That's my issue. For either of them. They're both in their, their quote-unquote walk years, right? Free agents after the 2023 season. Just like Aaron uh, Judge. 30 years old after this season. Do you think the Blue Jays 
should have extended Teoscar Hernandez. Absolutely. Do you think that would have been the, the, the approach? So yeah, this or is Lourdes. a. I, I looked so, at Lord, like Lourdes to me is Yuli. Okay. Lourdes is better than Yuli. Okay, so which of those two would you have prioritized then? Teoscar or Lourdes? Fine with either. I'm fine with either approach. For our, Honestly, okay, let's just them. stick with Teoscar then, let's just for argument's Teo. sake. Let's say yeah. Lourdes does get moved, whatever. We bring in a lefty bat. It is what it is. But Teoscar is our guy. Yes. How much? Because, okay, we're looking at a 30-year-old outfielder yeah. who statistically is on the decline. No. Do you do you see a resurgence from Teoscar Hernandez? Because I think he's going to have a good year in Seattle. I but. don't think he's uh, statistically on the decline. His OPS plus in the last three years is 135. Okay, and it's on, and it's last it's year? literally on the decline. Okay, because no, but, sure but, we but, could, but, no, no no hold on 2020 yeah. it was 146 for an OPS yeah. plus 2021 it went down to 131. Last year, it went down again to 127. His OPS yeah. went from 919 to 870 to 807. Yes. That's on the decline. Yes, but by definition. My, my and now argument, he's only getting older. Yeah, my argument is that um, his his last year, where it was what, 807? 807 last year, 2022. So last year's slug across the league just fell off. As a hitter last year, it is a it's an interesting situation to come into as a hitter uh vladdy lost 140 points of his slug, right Bo yeah. lost 20 so it was a it was a situation where hitters were reacting differently to that ball now teo went to an eight 807 last year ops right the 127 ops yeah. plus still put him in fifth or sixth in league slugging still batted 270 that's a guy who plays 150 games, he hits 33, 35 home runs, he knocks in 110, he knocks in 100 runs. I don't think Teo's on the decline. I think Teo found his swing at 28, and he will be a Nelson Cruz masher until he's 40. But that's when. That's optimistic. I mean... I I see everything that I saw in, in Jose Batista. I hear what you're saying about slugging being down across baseball. I do get that. But the point of OPS plus, my understanding of it is it is weighted against the the league, league, right? So uh, an OPS plus of 127, yeah, he's still a 27 points better than the league average, right? Which is still good, but it's still coming down, right? We talk about Bo Bichette. OPS plus went up last year. Yes. Went from 121 to 127. Yeah. Vladdy had a substantial drop off, but obviously the year before he hit 167 for an OPS plus. Yeah. You can't expect to maintain those, uh, no. those numbers. No, but I, to me, to me, Teo's, Teo's numbers are right in the range of where he, he sits OPS was. To me, if you're looking at normal baseballs, his OPS should sit anywhere from 850 to 940. That's where he's going to sit. I think he's going to sit there for a long time. That bat speed isn't going anywhere over the next six years. He is literally just, look at who he was 20 to 27. Didn't know who he was. Dante Bichette says, get rid of that leg kick. Level yourself out. He's a 270 hitter. Top 10 in league in slugging. Great wheels. A number four hitter. And this is, this is what I... This is what I see out of Dalton Vars show. I feel like they are oh, I don't. on a similar career path, but Dalton Vars show is just four years behind it. I, I see the last four years of Tay Oscar and go, that's where Dalton Vars show is about to go. We're going to get those. Teo hits the ball 92 six off the bat. Varsho hits the ball 87. Vladdy hits the ball 92 eight off the bat. So. When they make contact, and especially when you make those moves to, to right, right center field, that's where Teo hits the ball. How many more balls are going out for Teo if you make those moves for him as opposed to Dalton Varsho and his uh, 10, 104 OPS plus, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm not this, 
my hatred isn't towards Varsho, by the way. It's the I, fact that I think I, Varsho I got gotcha. and Teo would be great. If you had Varsho and Teo, then you have a balanced lineup. You don't lose anything offensively. You gain defensively. Well, if you made one of those moves, I'm all for it. Lourdes is gone. Gabriel Moreno is gone. Varsho comes in. Teo stays. Teo said you keep one of your corner outfielders on their walk year so they can go out there and set their value the way Aaron Judge just did with the Yankees winning an MVP. I mean, they let their the, guy walk, they're not in the playoffs. The, the great irony in this is that the Blue Jays are, by all accounts, in the market for a right handed outfielder. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll give you that. I would feel better about this team minus Eric Swanson. And keeping Tay Oscar, one hundred percent. You like you just. And I'm not a Tay Oscar both. fan. I'm not a Tay Oscar fan. But I'm I'm a Tay Oscar fan on knowing that that guy hits fourth in a in a lineup, and is terrifying at the plate. You think you think the Yankees sat there and went, you know, wait, they traded Eric Swanson for Tay Oscar Hernandez. You think every single member of the AL East wasn't just like. Thank God a, a, a reliever throws 50 innings against a guy who hits a three run Jack in the eighth and wins the game. Every game, the value there is just staggeringly different. If you want to win now, if you're legitimate about winning now and the fact that you can't maintain, you can't sign these two guys. You can't sign either Lourdes or tail. You're telling me that, that the, the management issues with the players are so bad that you can't take a guy from Houston. who was nothing in tail, nothing. This guy's playing Dominican winter ball. This guy's a fourth outfielder. He, he's, he's not worth anything. We turn him into a silver slugger, all-star, 30 home run, 100 RBI, 100 run guy who's in his prime and set his value, making him worth hundreds of millions of dollars now. And we can't sign him? We turned him into that. We can't sign that player? We can't sign Simeon? We can't sign... Our Cy Young winner, we can't sign the guy who hit 45 home runs. No, we, we, you know what we can do? We can trade all our prospects for Barrios, for, for Chapman, you know? I hey, love Chapman. hold on. I love Chapman. I'm not sold on Barrios. Haven't but been since we made in, the trade. Bringing in Chapman is a loss compared to what Simeon did last year. If we had Simeon on the team, that's three more wins. That's a six-war player and a three-and-a-half-war player, right? That's... So right there is another loss. Stripling, another loss. Going big on spending huge money on, on the production, the hopeful production of Stripling on Bassett. I like Chris Bassett, but look at our starting rotation. It's Ryu out, okay? We need Manoa to be a stud. The expectations are on him are to be an ace now. He has to be, he is, but he has to maintain that. Let's, um, let's, let's, look, his, let's look at the two kids, okay? Because, again, we're getting long in the tooth here on topic number two. This is going to be a two-hour episode. This is great. Uh, let's let's look at the kids. Bo and Vladdy. I know this is a point of frustration for you as well. 